Dustin Lynch came to Nashville on a golf scholarship with a dream of becoming a singer. The goal was to get to Nashville, Tennessee and write songs. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was wanting to chase the dream of music even in high school. So getting to Nashville was one step closer to doing it for real. And in a full circle moment, the first artist that Dustin Lynch ever met, Trace Atkins, would go on to be the artist to invite Dustin to become the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. Come That's to find out years later, he's the guy that walks out on stage and Adam invites Benson. me to be a member of the Opry. Unbelievable. <laughs> Today, he has released his sixth studio album, opening up his life, and becoming very personal for the first time. It, it just kind of fit um, the emotion that we were looking for for this album of, of really an album that was addressing um, kind of the ups and downs of trying to find your the your person, person, your person. Mm. Um, and in that, in that incredible journey, uh, there's downs. Welcome to On the Record from the John Deere stage in the heart of Nashville. We are on Music Row. I'm Suzanne Alexander and sitting down with a multi-award, multi-platinum selling artist who's had over a decade of number one hits and they keep on coming. Justin Lynch. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Great to be back with you. We the just John, in. I feel at home. The do, John do, Deere this stage. This is the John Deere stage. Exactly. We're going to talk about you. I mean, I know being out on your farm and stuff, I know it's yeah. what you love to do. We just rolled in with Kill the Cowboy video, and boy, what a song. Before we get to this music, I have to talk about, man, how you kicked off this year. Yes. Hanging wow. out in Times Square on it, network television. That, that was not on the dream list, I have to say. It just kind of popped in my life, and it was like, okay, here we are. So much fun. I, it was so epic. Play a little chorus Let's do right here. Is that cool? Small yeah. town boy, small one of your nine one. number ones. Let's do it. She loves a small town boy like me. She my bad type, baby. She my cool, she my crazy, she my laid back in the front seat. Listen, I'm from New York, right, originally, and, I, you know, going into the city is just overwhelming in general, but yeah. on New Year's Eve, that has to be intense. It was wild, the energy, you can just feel it, mm. and, um, you know, we were blessed just to, to be on set, so we actually had some boundaries, right. you know, right. you know, <laughs> yeah. it was like a mosh on, pit. <laughs> yeah, you're on camera, you are in a mosh pit, you know, and I think there were some, like a million people down there for this thing collectively, crazy, and um, wow. but you could feel it in the air, you mm. know, and, and just the start of a new year, and in the place that, you know, I grew up watching the ball drop in New right. York City and um, to get to be a part of what brought that in to so many people's lives this year was incredible. Oh, it was so awesome to watch you. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Speaking of mosh pit, man, can we talk about the pool celebration? I we mean, can. crash my playa. Luke Bryan, how many years now you've been doing this? This was our ninth. Just got back. I'm a little tan right now. Um, <laughs> Looking nice yeah, and fresh and good. Uh, the ninth year. Ninth year. Ninth year. We've done every Down single year. Yeah, mm. we've done every single year. Mm. And in the first year there, like, hey, why don't you grab your guitar and just kind of making it up as we went. Why don't you grab your guitar and go play a couple songs at the pool today? I'm like, a couple songs. We're in Mexico. So I stopped, <laughs> me, and the, me and a couple of my band guys stopped by the, the uh, convenience store in the resort and grabbed some rum and some tequila bottles. And we walk out uh, to the side of the pool. We end up playing for like an hour and a half. And the crowd just kept getting bigger and bigger. And the light bulb went off in my head. We should do this again next year. This mm. was cool. This, there was something here. And they asked us to do it again the following year. I said, well, at least give me some speakers this time around. Right. And it's grown into this crazy circus. Now we have a parade, and this year we had a theme. I was going to say the theme this year, what was it like? We had, it was a toga like party. A gladiator. Yeah, yeah. Roman, Roman Empire toga mm -hmm. party type of, of day. Yeah. So I just thought it would be fun. You know, we count down um, to this show every year, and the fans do as well. So they, I was like, let's give them something to pack. They can pack to Mexico. So everybody, <laughs> or I guess we did see a lot of stolen bed sheets. I was going to say bed sheets from yeah, the hotel. Yeah, I don't know if the no resort doubt. really loved that idea in hindsight, but here well, we are. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be charging that to your credit card. No doubt. I can't wait to see the bill, bill come in. Like I said, you know, we rolled in with a video, Kill the Cowboy, and, and man, it, it is so cool. And I love that stuff. You know, this kind of broody, kind of minor chord stuff. I feel like this is darker than anything you've ever done. It is. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. You know, it, it was a song that really struck me. Um, a buddy of mine sent it to me after he wrote it, and it, it just kind of fit um, the emotion that we were looking for for this album of, of really an album that was addressing um, kind of the ups and downs of trying to find your the your person, person, your person. Mm. Um, 
And in that, in that incredible journey, uh, there's downs, you know, yeah. and, and relationships that kind of take the wind out of your sails. You know, and you, you've been talking about that, and I know in the promotion of this, really kind of talking about you're at this stage in your life, you know, and I mean, listen, uh, you know, a lot of people say Dustin Lynch, the most eligible bachelor in country music, right? Everybody, you know, talks about it, the fact, and, and you don't shy away from that, that you're single, looking for the right person. Yeah. You know, at a point in your life, you, you got to say, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, you, you don't seem like you're, you know, I watch you on Instagram. You're living life. I mean, yeah, you're adventurous. I'm, you take advantage of life. I, and I think talking, you know, writing this album, recording this album, talking through, promoting it, um, I found a piece, you know, because mm. there's a lot. When, when you're trying to dig deep and, like, find songs that mean something to you, you have to dive into these corners and, and be vulnerable. And, and you start questioning, like, man, if I've have I done life the right way? We only get one of these. And uh, I think through this process, I realized just to embrace where I'm at. Um, right. I'm, I'm very happy with where I am in life and, and I've built a, a great life. And, but I think, you know, also I've, I've been in relationships in the past doing a lot of the events we get to do and a lot of the, mm -hmm. the fun travels and, and just everything. It's, it's nice to go to prom with a date every now and again. Right. <laughs> and you know, you listen through this, this song, the track listing on yeah. kill the cowboy. I mean, yeah, half of it's, you know, really kind of, you know, breakup stuff and, you know, even, you know, we got the breakup down that song, sure. which I love because there are a lot of couples that go, yeah, we do. Oh, but yeah. The other half of this record, I feel like it's, Dustin Lynch getting his groove on. I mean, you are like, you know, you're chasing these girls down in a lot of these songs. And I yeah. love that, that it's just so much hope and it's so much fun. It, it's, you know, it, it seems like you're really enjoying where you are. And I don't think, you know, we look at society. This is where you have to be. This is a step. Married kids at this age. I think that goes out the window today. Don't you think that? I think it's slowly starting to get there. You know, yeah. I look at a lot of my friends growing up in my hometown and, and it feels like the smaller towns, um, you know, in the USA kind of move a little quicker. Through the, through the timeline of life. I've, my, my friends have kids in, you know, middle school playing football right now. Right, right. And uh, here I am still looking for a date to the CMA. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a little moving a little bit slower through that. I don't know your story. That's why I'm so glad you're here. I so wanted you to be on set with us because you weren't, I mean, you, I know you were athletic, mm. you, you pursued golf. When did music come into play? Because your family wasn't musical, right? No, I, I'm the first one to ever really give this a, a go, um, <laughs> which I think, you know, for me, I, I got to Nashville because of golf. I played golf growing up um, competitively as a junior golfer. And then you went to school on a scholar golf I scholarship. I did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I got I got offered a, a scholarship to play here in Nashville at, at Lipscomb University um, last minute. I was I was committed to go to Middle Tennessee University. Um, um, and last minute, the coach called and said, hey, we got some scholarship money we'd like to offer you. I'm like, heck yeah, I'm in. I love to play college golf. D1 school, and it got me to Nashville, wow. close to the Bluebird, close to the Opry, close to Lower Broadway, which was my dream. Um, and and so I, I stayed uh, competitive through college, ended up getting a full ride and, and playing golf. And uh, I started chasing music, to answer your question, in high school when I was I started uh, in a band when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember that because it was funny. It's like, we got band practice. We can't get to each other. <laughs> Mom, can you drive me? And then like one of our buddies um, that we, we always still joke, he's our manager because he was the first one that turned 16. He could come pick us <laughs> all up do the circle. and take us to, our, to uh, <laughs> one of our you know dad's garages to practice. Were in. you doing country music then? Um, no, actually the, the other three band members, you know, they were too cool for school back then. Mm -hmm. They hated country music. So, uh, but they would give me one country song. Every show. So you were the country guy. Yeah. Kind of so thing. they would give me one song and then we would cover like, uh, you know, rock and kind of pop rock stuff and the, the rest of our show. But we played a, a lot of original music. So the songwriting came in very early on for me. I mean, we, you know, we were kind of playing half originals that we had written together as a band and, and half cover songs. Wow. I, I want to talk about making that leap to really getting serious here mm -hmm. in Nashville, of course, going to school here. A lot more. Stay with us when we come back. I'm talking with Dustin Lynch on the record. So I took that meeting and, and within a couple of weeks, um, I was here on Music Row freaking out, you mm. know, having played my original songs for the record label of Taylor, Taylor Swift at the time. Did I you mean, have the biggest of the biggest. I left that meeting with, a, you know, a, an offer for a record deal and a publishing deal.
love that song. Welcome back to On the Record, spending time with the man in that video. Dustin Lynch here, Cowboys and Angels man. What a song and really kind of set the precedence uh, and really kind of kicked off your career. Was that 2012? 2012, yeah. Wow. I know, time's flying. You know, before the break, we were talking about you kind of coming here, of course, going to school here in college on a golf scholarship. Mm. And music was always kind of underlying. When did you really go, okay, I'm going to get serious about it. Like, was there a crossroads where you thought, crossroads of going to golf or going into music? I'd already made the decision, um, you know, early on in college, maybe even before college. But, you know, I try, I try to stay good enough to keep my scholarship. Mm. But the goal was to get to Nashville, Tennessee and write songs. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was wanting to chase the dream of music even in high school. So getting to Nashville was one step closer to doing it for real. And, um, but you still got to figure out how to make a living and pay rent. Right. And so I was cutting grass. Um, after I graduated cutting grass, I, I, I was studying to, and to go to med school. Um, and be, I wanted to be a surgeon, you know, if music didn't work out, maybe that, that was my passion. I was just enjoyed biology and you had a major in something. So that's what I did. I did bi biology and chemistry. Um, not everybody can say that by the way. So clearly a brainiac. I'm just going to put <laughs> no, that no, out there. I don't know about that. I'm just <laughs> dumb and work hard. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I graduate college. At that time, I'd, I'd figured out how to start getting paid to play frat parties and mm. sorority events. And so I'm in college getting paid to go to other schools' frat parties. And it was the wow. best job ever. Um, and making good cash money, too. And uh, you fast forward and, like, college kids start getting married. And then we started playing some wedding receptions. And um, it was making a great living just doing the cover band thing and, and trying to write songs. And at that point, it's like, wow, I'm literally able to sustain my life in Nashville, pay rent and, and live, you mm -hmm. know, a great life. Just doing these shows, music full time, still having a um, I had a, a, a job at an environmental lab here in Nashville as well during the day. But I was I got to a point where I'm like, why do I have that job? Right, let's let's uh, that? open our days up and start really trying to write more songs. And I did that. And um and doors started opening for me. I was going to say, networking start to happen. Your name start to get out there and go, hey, somebody pay attention. Well, did you sign a publishing deal, a label deal? How, how did that all come Yeah, about? believe it or not, I was at, I was at that lab job and, and in one of the walk-in coolers where we kept a lot of samples. Um, just a hint on this, I was testing sewage. <laughs> it was what I was working I do remember on. that so, story. Yeah, so <laughs> and I thought, how? I was, I was literally in a walk-in cooler <laughs> with a bunch of samples of sewage. And I get a call. I don't recognize the number. Voicemail. Listen to the voicemail still in the cooler so I don't get caught, you know. And uh, it, it was a manager at the time for Justin Moore. And one of my golf team members was working with his son-in-law son uh, at an insurance company here and turned, turned uh, Pete uh, Hartung onto my, my music and, and onto my MySpace page back in the day. <laughs> and he's like, I'm a huge fan. I'd love to meet you. So I took that meeting and, and within a couple of weeks, um, I was here on Music Row and uh, Big Machine, that label, um, and freaking out, you know, mm. having played my original songs for the record label of Taylor, Taylor Swift at the time. Did I you mean, have the Cow biggest of the biggest? Did you have Cowboys and Angels at the time? Uh, no, I hadn't written Cowboys and Angels mm. yet. I left that meeting with a, you know, a, an offer for a record deal and a publishing deal. It was, it was kind of crazy whirlwind. I'm going to fast forward and jump to a, a venue that is so near and dear to your heart. I'm talking about the Grand Ole Opry. Yes. Making your debut also in 2012. Yeah. Do you remember family coming in? Everybody who was there, who was playing? That um, moment of I, I on do. That stage? It was March second. Um, I do remember that, and I remember that we were still touring pretty heavily on ra what they call radio tours. So we're going to introduce all of our music to uh, you know every radio station right. across the country in like six weeks. It's mm. grueling. But United Airlines decided they would smash our guitars because we had to check them. It was like a, one of those planes between New York and Philadelphia or something. So we couldn't fit the, the guitars in the plane. They had, we had to check them underneath, and they all, all three of our guitars got smashed. So we had the Opry coming up in a couple mm. days. I don't have, we don't have any guitars, so I'm like running around tr town trying to find a guitar to play that I like, and uh, actually found one at my producer's studio, which is the guitar I took on stage and, and played the Opry for for the very first time. That's a, he's got a, is he, does he still have it? Or oh, he absolutely, it? Yeah. yeah, without a <laughs> doubt. I wish I had it. I was going to say, you should probably give that to you. Right? I know, maybe one of these days. But, it, you know, that moment, walking into that circle, I've been to the Opry, and I would mm. never let myself step in the circle. Um, I had the opportunity to. I'm like, no, I'm not no, going to do it until, until I, you perform. Yeah, until I'm invited yeah. to perform there. And I, and I did that, and since then, you know, I've become a, a member, member 
And uh, did you just, know 2018? Did you know what was going to happen? No Trace Atkins had no, no idea. No, no way. Family was there, so obviously your parents were yeah, kind of I privy they, to this. Th yeah, they let yeah. everybody. Well, my mom and dad don't miss an Opry performance, so they're always going to be there. But I think they let you know the rest of my team know that they're going to be this is happening. inviting me that night. And, and a, a funny story, like the first country artist I ever met in my life, I was uh, 16, and Trace Atkins came down to Stamet Nag Chevrolet um, in Tullahoma to do an appearance. I guess they're you know give him a truck or something. And he was doing an autograph line. And I, it was um, myself and my girlfriend. We stood in line for an hour. We'll finally get to Trace. And uh, I was like, Mr. Trace, I'd, you know, good to meet you. I'd love to take a picture of you and my girlfriend. He looked at me and looked at her. And he goes, you're dating this little shrimp. <laughs> right? So Trace Atkins. Right? <laughs> so I'm devastated. Like the first country artist, like it's Trace Atkins. And he's he's busting. heckling you, right? Yeah. Giving you a hard time. Come to find out years later, he's the guy that walks out on stage and invites, invites me you. to be a member of the Opry. You're going to be back here playing on September the 18th, I heard. Yes, sir. Well, I'm here to tell you that when you play here on September 18th, it will be as the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. Unbelievable. You I can't mean, that's make it up. Like, that's like a God thing. It We're is. just so full circle. I know, it's crazy. I have my theories as to why you haven't met the right one, because the official induction to the Grand Ole Opry came from a woman that <laughs> you have had a crush on forever, yes. who was always taken, by the way, and not available, because we have a <laughs> McIntyre. That she is. <laughs> that she is, yes. And another surprise. I, I told everybody I don't want to know who's coming out. You know, it just surprised me. I, I, I just want to, I want to feel it, you know, and, and not be anticipating what I'm going to say. Or, mm. And freaking Reba McIntyre walks out to induct me into the Grand Old Opry. Best Unbelievable. Best of the best. What yeah. a night. Yeah. I'm, I'm a crier, and I definitely cried at that moment. Absolutely. I was so happy when I saw that she was doing it. For that. We, we did this, this really cool, uh, you know, like trophy case. With, with all of the momenta, you know, memories from that night. And, and she uh, ran off stage and brought me out tissues after, uh, after I'd started my next song. Because I was just a mess, you know. And uh, that's one of the things that I kept. Like, we got to keep these tissues <laughs> Reba brought me on Did stage. Did you really? Absolutely. You got to put them like in a shadow box. Oh, it is. Say, oh, it is. It's and in there with, yeah, with the set list oh and like the, the program and, and the tissues Reba brought me. <laughs> I love that. I'm sure. Does she know? She I don't know if she knows that She should one. autograph those for you. That'd yeah, that be could awesome. Be cool. So, I mean, here you are, right? You know, you got this new album, six studio album, Kill the Cowboy. You go, obviously, you live on tour. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know you got the Blake Shelton tour. Uh, you're going to be doing the Kill the Cowboy tour. Two nights, man, back to back, Ryman Auditorium stage. Busy, Another yeah, it's a, big. Probably the busiest spring stage. we've ever we've ever had. I mean, mm -hmm. we're you know we're going to be in forty something cities, I think, before mid May. Wow. And uh, I was looking at my calendar a couple of days ago, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with those those two weeks of, of break there that that are going to be probably at that point enjoyed. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm ready to go tour, but you know, come come city number fifty, right, it's exactly. going to be time for a cocktail <laughs> on the beach somewhere. <laughs> Love that. Well, stick around. We're going to talk a lot more. Get into this album, of course, and uh, you know, upcoming uh, what's coming up throughout this year. Oh, Dustin yeah. Lynch. Looking forward to it. Stay with us here on the record. The journey of music and making music is all about discovering. So yeah. I still feel brand new at it. Yeah. And, and I'm at a point now, you know, with, with Kill the Cowboy being released and us almost ready to go on tour. It's like, okay, as a, as a songwriter and an artist, you go, well, what's next? Welcome back to you on the record. We are located in the heart of Music Row, and that is a man that is our guest for this half hour, Dustin Lynch. Thinking about you, man, what a song. Six week number one song. What uh, double platinum selling single? Yeah. I mean, incredible. It's wild. Um, that, that's a blessing. That's one of those uh, that you pray for, you know? Mm. And uh, I think it was a God thing, you know, as well. Just the story of that song. It took me like, I've, I've realized that collabs and duets are hard. Yeah, they're hard to, to make happen. It, it's easy to get the song recorded, but but getting the stars to align for another artist, you know, in their career to line up and and have a release together with a different record label, it was a, a two year process to really get that song up and going. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that I waited it out. Mackenzie Porter, of course, yeah. uh, Canadian artist. Yes. And you guys, I mean, I heard the story. I don't know if people know this at home, but you found her online? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, well, yeah, we were just looking for someone to initially, um, Lauren Elena Lauren sang Elena, the song. Right. And her label um, wouldn't let us release it with her on it. They were trying to do something else with her songs. And um, 
so I'm like, okay, I believe in this song. It has to happen. It can't just stop here. Right. Um, and so I just submitted to the town. Hey, if you're an artist and want to put us, put your voice on, think about you and release it during this window, email us. And uh, we got a bunch of submissions. That's so crazy. Yeah. And I had my team take all the names off of who it was. So it was just, you know, versions in a folder. I didn't know who was singing. I just wanted to pick the, my favorite version. And first lesson through, I was like, it's this one for sure. Mm. And I, but I lived with it for a couple of weeks and it was still that one. And um, I'm like, okay, whose version, whatever. They're like, well, it's this artist named Mackenzie Porter. I'm like, well, who's that? <laughs> so I started digging in. I'm like, wow, she's amazing. Right. And then um, the first day we met was when she recorded her vocal in studio. And I wanted to be there um, to be supportive, but also to see if she actually could do it. Because it's a hard song right, right. to sing. I mean, it's... It's, it takes you didn't a, know her, really. No, I mean, it takes a crazy talented singer to pull that off. And, and I was like, I just want to make sure she can sing it. Because mm -hmm. hopefully we get to do this thing live on TV at some point. And um, she killed it. She's Ooh, incredible boy. talent. Yeah. You talk about those collaborations. I'm going to make this leap here because Mackenzie Porter is a Canadian. There's another Canadian that is singing background vocals on one of your songs. Yeah. I'm talking about Chevrolet, which you are singing, collabing with Jelly Roll. Mm -hmm. Met Madeline Merlot, who a lot of people are just starting to get to know, yep. like Mackenzie Porter. I mean, has his career in Canada and has been here now in the States and kind of feels like, a, you know, I talked to, to Madeline about kind of this relaunch, but she's heard on your record and I know you're a big fan of hers. But getting to work with Jelly Roll, this was a big thing. Same producers, you know, the same people and yeah. Zach Rowell? Yeah, yeah, it was a great, it was a timing thing. And one of those silver linings of, you know, the, the world shutting down for a couple of years and us not getting to tour, um, we're all trying to figure out how do we connect with our fan bases, um, you know, from the house and, mm. and put out music. And I started noticing Jelly Roll, like he, his stuff was really just popping off and the interaction he was having, you know, he would post, but then you would see you know, 10 X the comments and interaction with what he was doing with what most other artists were doing. Mm. Like what's going on with this? And I was talking with Zach, like, he's like, actually, I used to make all the beats, like a lot of the beats for jelly roll. That's back, wild. Back in the way day, in the yeah. day when he, when Zach was making rap beats and jelly was rapping on them. And, um, I, heck I wasn't even in Nashville at this point yet. And he's like, let me reach out and see what, you know, what he's up to. Well, they start talking and it turns into should we try to make some music again? And um, and then, you know, we're all just kind of cooking in the kitchen at the same time and Chevrolet comes in and it's this iconic melody that's been around for decades. Yeah, the and, 70s, Dobie Gray song, Drift Away. For yeah, and then Uncle Cracker remakes it. It's another mm -hmm. giant hit. And and uh, this was a new lyrical take on that melody. And we're like, man, this is an opportunity to keep this melody alive and um, let's see how it comes out. And Jelly was, in it, you know, his voice has so much soul and experience and, it ended up just being the perfect match. That's great stuff. I know yeah. a lot of fans are going to be looking forward to seeing you perform that on stage. And as I mentioned before the break, the tour, of course, that's coming up, Kill the Cowboy Tour, when you have as many hits as you do, as I said in the, in the very opening, I mean, man, you've been recording music for over a decade now. Yeah. I mean, is it weird to say you're a veteran? I mean, do you feel like that? I don't feel like that. No, no I think that, you know, the, the journey of music and making music is all about discovering. So yeah. I still feel brand new at it. Yeah. And, and I'm at a point now, you know, with, with Kill the Cowboy being released and us almost ready to go on tour, it's like, okay, as a, as a songwriter and an artist, you go, well, what's next? Are you at the point now where you have to do medleys just to get everything in? That's the tough part, yeah, yeah is I we're trying to figure out, you know, how do, yeah, how yeah. do we continue to get some new music in, but not, you know, get hate mail after we leave town? Right, you, you didn't play songs. my favorite song and I bought these tickets. <laughs> That's going to happen if you yeah. leave one of the hits out. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's a delicate yeah. balance of, of figuring out, you know, how do we mash these songs up and, and get, you know, at least everything in that we at least think people are coming to want to hear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this man can do no wrong, I know that. As I mentioned, Dustin Lynch at rest. I know what are your safe places, your, your safe haven, your, I don't know, reset place, your farm, being out yes. there. What about, do you have cattle? Are you running I cattle do. out there? I do, yeah, that was a goal of mine. You know, was, my first job as a kid was helping down the street at a Black Angus farm. I was $5 an hour. Started working down there when I was 13, I think, 13 or 14. So and you kind of had experiences. Yeah, oh yeah, I've farmers, kinda, I've kinda, right? yeah, I've kind of, yeah, I've kind of touched all, all of it. Um, I know I'm, you got your food plots going, that I, do. I know. Yeah, <laughs> most of my farm is recreational, what they call recreational, because I'm a huge outdoorsman. I love being in the woods and, and, you know, improving habitat for deer and turkey. And I took this farm over from a logging company and they just decimated it. And um, the habitat was just not 
really there. So that was a fun project. Still is a fun project. It's so just all replanting and yeah, and just yeah. just making sure that you know uh, it, it, it's really cool. To, when I took the farm over, you kind of would see a deer here and there, maybe hear a turkey off in the distance. Now we're crawling with animals, so I know I'm doing something right. But that's my passion. Mm. I mean, I think I think every day about it, and I spend money about every day about it too, <laughs> trying to make it the best farm it can be. And, and the cows now, I'm, I'm really enjoying it back into that. How many got, heads you have out there? Um, well, between my neighbor and myself, we share, we share pasture. So he's a third generation family out there. Oh, wow. And um, I just got so lucky with, with them. Um, we're right at, under a hundred head together. Oh, wow. But I, I'm growing it. Nice I'll probably, I don't know how much I'll get to grow you know, at some point we run out of grass. So mm. um, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, we're, we're um, it's fun. We're, you know, we're hobby farmers. We're not trying to do this thing and, you know, take over the four sixes with it or anything. Right. But <laughs> this is just fun. And, and um, like you said, and most importantly for me, it's a headspace and mm. um, it's good for the soul to get off the road and go out there and disappear a little bit. I got to say, though, if Taylor Sheridan is watching, you would not say no to a part in Yellowstone or whatever oh, else he's got all. coming up. Please. <laughs> Just natural. You get out on horseback at all there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we got some amazing trails out there. That's mm -hmm. one of the great parts about getting it from a logging company. They have to have good roads to get the trees out. So the road system through my farm is incredible. And and the trail riding is, too. Never a dull moment with you, is it? No. Uh, you keep busy. Got to. I love it. Justin Lynch, everybody, congratulations Thank on everything, you. man. Thank you so much for the time. For sure. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time here on The Break.